Okay, stand by. Stand by in three, two, one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We come together with the Universal Church to celebrate the first Sunday in Advent, to celebrate and to acknowledge that we are going towards something. So we should prepare ourselves to receive the Lord at his coming at Easter, at, at Christmas Day. So as we come into this celebration, let us know that we are, this is a time of preparation. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Because of my brothers and friends, I will say peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced, the day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, nor in rivalry and jealousy but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all the way. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have some pretty intense imagery in this gospel. Uh, two people being out in the field, one being taken up, one being left. It's kind of a source for the kind of some different Christians 
view on the rapture, that there is going to be some kind of taking up of the elect and some being left here. And in our Catholic faith, we don't necessarily subscribe to the rapture. And personally, uh, I'm okay with that because I always kind of felt this rapture to be kind of weird. But anyway, we look at today's readings and they point us to a certain theme, and that's prepare, to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And in our contemporary society, we're, it's everybody's usually preparing for that celebration, that party at Christmas Day. And there's things we do, we can name. Getting gifts, preparing the house, inviting guests. Those are all things we can do. But as people of faith, we do something else as well. And that is prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord. And that may be a little more difficult than the other preparations, because those other preparations, the buying gifts, preparing the house, those are things we have almost full control over. Those are things we can really manage with our hands. Preparing our hearts, it takes a little more. We've got to give up control. We have to cede control to our Lord to help us prepare ourselves for him. So this Advent, just remember that the Lord is there for us and that we don't have to be in full control of everything, but we can let him take control of our hearts so that when we do have this celebration on Christmas Day, that we are more and more fully aware of his love for us in the world and for those around us. Let's prepare first our hearts for the coming of Christ this Lent, this Advent. As is tradition in the church, we will now bless the Advent wreath. The, the marking of candles here helps us to trace our time through this beautiful time of year in our church. Let us pray. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we enter this holy season of Advent, we prepare our hearts to receive the Messiah. With joyful hope, let us offer our prayers to the Lord. For the Church, called always to reflect the light of Christ to others, may the Holy Spirit help us make a joyful and fruitful witness to the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for all who support the work of vocation prom promotion through their prayers and good works. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For leaders in government, community, and service organizations, may God grant them the gift of fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those struggling with darkness of the mind, heart, or soul, may Christ's light bring them comfort and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our diocesan faith community, may the Holy Spirit help us increase and abound in love for one another as children of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died in Christ, May they live in glory forever with God and all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving Father, please hear and answer our prayers this day in your wisdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Creator of the stars of night, your people's everlasting light, O Christ, Redeemer of us all, we pray you'll hear us when we call. In sorrow that the ancient curse should doom to death a universe, you came, O Savior, to set free our own in glorious liberty. When this old world drew on toward night, you came but not in splendor bright, not as a monarch but a child of Mary, blameless mother mine. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 